Hello students, uh, now let's go through the uh, seed code I gave you for uh, RSA key generation for your project. Um, so here we'll be using this big integer class in Java. So as I said, I always suggest you to use the um, Java API. So if you go to Google, um, type Java API and go to this and go to this, this list of all the classes and then go to the big integer class you can really see all the methods that you want okay <clears throat> so all the methods here will be very useful for you okay so of course not all of them just few of them will be using here but uh, uh, you can feel free to go through all that um, the website okay so let's go through the pseudo uh, so not pseudo code the actual code the java code uh, so <clears throat> I'm just creating two random number generators and this is the uh, seed for the random number generators I want to use uh, create them with two different seeds so if I use a system time I um, since the system time is uh, changing constantly, uh, each time you run the program, you're bound to get uh, different sequence of random numbers. And um, so I multiply the system time. Uh, so this current system time, this thing gives you the current system time in the number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970. Okay. So if you multiply this by 10, it's going to be uh, even longer. Uh, actually, these, these two, uh, this method really returns a um, data type of uh, a, a value of data type long. Okay. All right. So you will input the public key uh, as a command line argument. Okay. So let's say I'll later show you how to run this program, but let's say this is input to, to you okay uh, to the program and um, I'm getting it as a string and I'm passing that to get as an integer so the public key is really the user's choice of course whatever the user has chosen is just a tentative of public key it may not be the actual public key okay so that's what you're going to decide through this program okay all right so now remember in rsa the steps for rsa is what you have to have two prime integers p and q right so we are going to generate the two prime integers p and q over here right so uh, this probable prime method of this big integer class will help you to generate the prime numbers okay the big integers prime uh, big integers now this 32 indicates you have uh, your you're generating prime integers of length 32 bits and this is where uh, you're passing the random number generators that you created here so uh, these are the two arguments for this probable prime method okay so that returns a big integer which is a prime integer p and then another big integer which is also a prime integer uh, q okay uh, by using rand all right so now you call the multiply method so this multiply method is called on one of the big integers and you pass the other big integer as the argument so i call this multiply method on big integer p and pass big integer q as the argument then uh, so this is what is your n remember as part of this you're supposed to compute this um, n right so uh, so you compute your n so n is p times q so then you compute p minus 1 and q minus 1 so this is what I'm doing so I'm storing that in a separate variable uh, this is basically representing p minus 1 for me so I'm subtracting from p 1 so this is how you transform 1 as a big integer Okay, so you put this one and you wrap it up with this big integer class. So this is p minus one. Similarly, to get q minus one, what you do is you call the subtract method on this q and pass the big integer. Uh, you wrap it up with one, and this is your q minus one. Okay. 
So now what I'm trying to do is I'm doing P minus 1 times Q minus 1. So I'm calling this subtract, uh, sorry, the multiply method on P minus 1, the big integer, and passing the Q minus 1 as my argument. So I'm basically multiplying P minus 1 times Q minus 1 and storing that product over here as another variable, uh, another big integer. Okay, so we have all the variables that we want. So now it's time to generate your encryption key or uh, you can call here as a public key because the public key is at least chosen by the user initially, right? So it has to be known to the user. So uh, we want the public key or the encryption key to be relatively prime to P minus 1 times Q minus 1. So what is relatively prime? We keep on finding the GCD until uh, it is 1, right? So we don't know, of course, what is that exact public key. So we I run an infinite while loop now. Okay, so I run an infinite while loop, and uh, as part of this while loop, what I'm doing is uh, I'm computing the GCD of my public key. Remember, this is what is input by the user, right? As an integer, so I am wrapping it up as a big integer now. And I'm calling the GCD method on this P minus 1 times Q minus 1 product and passing the public key big integer. So I get my GCD. Now, if this GCD equals 1, so that's a static variable, uh, big integer dot 1 in this class. So if this GCD equals that big integer, you can break from the loop because you have found your public key. Otherwise, you keep incrementing your public key until you can find the GCD to be 1. Okay, so that's the purpose of this while loop. So once you come out of this loop, you have your public key and you can wrap it up again as a big integer. So your private key, the last step is what? The multiplicative inverse of the public key in the class modulo P minus 1 times Q minus 1. So what you do is you call the mod inverse method on the public key, right, and pass the p minus 1 times q minus 1, the product, okay. So you want to find the multiplicative inverse of this guy in the class modulo this guy, right. So that will get you the private key as a big integer. So I can then print out my public key along with the value of n and the private key along with the value of n. Okay, so now let me show you how to run this. Okay, type cmd and get this window. Go to the folder where I have you have your Java program. compiling this so there's another video I have posted on setting up the Java path so I'll look on to that okay so now I can run this is the name of the class that will be generated okay where you have declared your main function so RSA key gen is the name of the class you can name it any name you want but make sure you run using that name so as I said uh, um, as I showed in the thing the seed code uh, project uh, description posted in the website. So let's say you start with 34. You end up choosing 37 as the public key, but you see the n values may be different from what I posted there because um, uh, because why? Because you're using random number generators, right? So you may not get the same n values. It's kind of different. Okay right so this is how we generate so this is your public key now and you can run one more time with a different public key for the second user say 78 or something and you end up with a public key and a private key okay so in your socket program for the first project you need to run um, you need to run it twice the first time you run you get the public key for say the sender the second time you run it to get the public key for the and the public key and private key of course so the first time you run you get the public key and private key for the sender the second time you run you get the public key and the private key for the receiver all right so let me stop here